Now, how does the surgery work? Well, what happens is that in most centers, you'll come in the, the night, um, the day before, and be screened by an anesthesiologist. They'll make sure that you're, you're a suitable candidate for the DBS operation, that you're gonna be able to tolerate it. In most centers, you'll actually stay awake during the operation, and so it's important to understand that. And, and in fact, if you have claustrophobia or if you have some fear of being awake, we may wanna have some counseling for you before you end up in the operating suite so that you understand how it's gonna happen. You'll hear side conversations going on. You'll be completely awake, almost like a member of the surgical team. And so you'll get screened by the anesthesiologist the day before. In some centers, they'll even get a specialized MRI scan of your brain the day before the operation. And the day of the operation, you'll come in, and what they do is they'll put a heavy hat called a head frame, um, and they'll attach it to certain aspects of your of your skull, certain landmarks. And the reason that they do that is they're going to play a virtual reality exercise uh, with your brain. And they're gonna take this heavy hat and it has markers on it. And they're either going to get another scan called a CT scan or another MRI with this heavy hat on and they're gonna turn your brain into a virtual reality space. So these markers that are on this heavy hat this so-called head frame will allow registration with the scan that they get and then they'll turn your brain into what's called an old-fashioned Cartesian coordinate system. So that's X, Y, Z. They'll find a spot in the brain, they'll point to it, and then the neurologist or the neurophysiologist will pass a tiny little electrode called a microelectrode into the brain the tip of that electrode is about the size of a hair. It's measured in microns. And we measure red blood cells in microns, so it'll give you an idea how small that electrode is. And what we'll do is drive that electrode down, this is all done by a computer, and listen to the cells sing. And the cells will sing a song. And as we go through different brain regions, it's like driving through Europe. Every brain region has a different language and so as you cross from the border from one area to another they speak a different language. We'll decode that and try to create a three-dimensional map of where the structures are in your brain. Once we know where the right location is we'll put an electrode in and the electrode is about a millimeter in diameter so this is small and it has four little contacts on it. And those contacts we can stimulate with thousands of different combinations to try to improve your symptoms of Parkinson. It's very important that these extremely well-trained and skilled teams get that electrode into the right place. And in fact, if they don't, you may not get that lasting benefit from the operation. Once the electrode's in place, they'll actually test it in the operating room. So you may even see some results during the operation. In some cases, we don't see tremendous benefits or um, side effects in the operation, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you don't do well if that structure's been mapped properly. Once the operation is complete, you'll either get a battery pack right up underneath your clavicle, so that's your collarbone, and attached to a wire that goes up underneath your skin to control that device, and it's like a pacemaker. And the pacemaker, the wire goes up to your brain, so it's different than the pacemaker in your heart where the wire goes over to your heart. Once that pacemaker's in place, and once the brain has had a chance for a few weeks after that operation to cool down, your neurologist will start programming you. And usually you program once a month on average for about the first six months. Once they find the right combination of um, stimulation parameters, and there are thousands of different parameters, so it's very important that you're followed closely by someone who has some expertise with the device. Once they find the right stimulation parameters, they'll also adjust your medications around and find the right mix for you. And six months after the therapy, you'll actually have very little changes to the stimulation or programming parameters of the device but you may have changes to the, um, to the medications. And so it's, it's an it's a ongoing process. It's not a light switch. Although if the right patients are chosen for this operation, 
the, the results can really be quite dramatic uh, and they can improve the symptoms that the patient wanted improved before the operation as long as the conversations, the education has happened in the right format and that the patients are completely informed about what the risks and benefits of the operation are.